happening gang it's your boy retro back again with another reaction video yeah yeah today we got very groundbreaking news um i actually ran across this video and i knew we had to check it out um this is syria joining the israeli war um I'm excited to check this one out this is syria joining and um actually fighting um against israel too just like hamas so um now we got another country joining and um they're vowing to take for revenge for those that they've lost so i'm excited to see what's going on there and what made israel or not israel but syria join in on the israeli war uh, we're gonna hop straight into it guys make sure you guys hit that like button hit that subscribe button guys we're on the road to the truth hop of war for the journey let's get straight into it y'all in the middle east hamas and hezbollah attacks on israel have created unthinkable tensions Today, Israel is battling on three fronts in response to strikes from the countries north and northeast. Hezbollah militant counterattacks from Israel's northern flank have escalated these terrorist acts, which started in the Gaza Strip, and the war's effects have spread to other areas. Hezbollah's attempts to attack from the Lebanese border, as well as rocket attacks from the Syrian side, have prompted Israel to launch significant strikes on Syria's most critical sites today. Mm. Here's the latest on how the most dramatic Israeli strikes since the war's start have played out, as well as the war's current stage. As you may recall, numerous mortar bombs were fired from Syria into the Golan Heights on Tuesday. Several of the shells passed into Israeli territory and landed in open areas, inflicting little damage, according to the IDF. In response, the Israeli Defense Forces IDF, declared that they had begun artillery attacks in Syria against the source of the mortar fire. Later that day, 15 rockets were launched from Lebanon towards western Galilee, setting off sirens in many villages. According to the IDF, four of the rockets were intercepted by the Iron Dome air defense system, while the rest landed in open regions with no damage or injuries. Hamas claimed responsibility for the rocket strike later. Following these assaults, Israel declared that it would respond to Syria's targeting of its land by exercising its right to self-defense. Yeah, so what made what made Syria want to, you know, is it just because Israel is, you know, distracted with what's going on with Hamas, you know, uh, and they feel like they could, you know, take advantage of them at this point? Or what, what made them, you know, decide they're going to hop in and just start sending random artilleries um, over to Israel? It just make, doesn't make sense to me right now. You guys let me know. Um, what's going on there? I'm a little confused. Would respond to Syria's targeting of its land by exercising its right to self-defense. The expected came today, when Syria reported in a breaking news report that Israeli airstrikes had attacked Damascus and Aleppo airports. Simultaneously. According to Syrian state television, Israeli airstrikes attacked the international airports in Damascus and Aleppo today, crippling their runways and forcing them to close. Wow. Both airports' runways were severely damaged, according to eyewitnesses. According to Sanaa, an anonymous military official, air defense systems were activated during the strikes, and no one was hurt. However, evidence from the two airports shows that there was also significant damage and massive smoke in both airports' airfields. Following its terrorist attacks in southern Israel, Hamas launched its first airstrike on Syria. The bombings in Syria occurred amid U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken's visit to Israel and just hours after Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, in a phone discussion with his Syrian counterpart, Bashar al-Assad, called on Arab countries to collaborate against Israel. Syria has not yet commented on the airport strikes in Damascus and Aleppo, but the airport attacks are thought to be aimed at cutting Iranian supply routes to Syria. Indeed, the closure of Syria's Damascus and Aleppo airports would significantly impair Iranian funding for Hezbollah. For years, Israel has carried out raids against jihadist targets in Syria, including the country's principal airports, as part of operations aimed at disrupting Iran's supply lines. However, many foreign sources believe this recent strike to be one of the most essential stages in the critical process of redrawing the balance in the Middle East. Iran's response to this issue is now being evaluated. Remember that Iran, which backs Hamas, hailed Hamas' strike on Israel on Saturday before the conflict began but stated that it was not engaged. Following the attacks on Syria, Tehran's actions in this regard will reflect Iran's attitude toward the Israeli conflict. 
On the other hand, as Israel's fight with Hamas and Hezbollah continues, we must declare that the definition of a hot zone has grown even further, as Hamas launched an attack on Haifa today, in addition to Israeli bombings on Syrian airfields. There were no recorded casualties as a result of the attacks. Today, there were also reports of explosions near the Lebanese border. Following the blasts, it was revealed that Hamas was using paramotors to infiltrate northern Israel from the Lebanese border. On the day of the fighting, Hamas used this form of terrorist attack at the concert grounds near Gaza City. However, Hamas militants attempted it today from the Lebanon border. Following these significant Hamas attacks, Israeli fighter jets and reconnaissance planes have started flying over Lebanon's airspace. Local Israeli sources said that work on Hamas and Hezbollah targets near the Lebanon border has begun and that the targets will be destroyed. The U.S. Embassy in Lebanon, on the other hand, was said to have been evacuated due to Hamas's effort to infiltrate northern Israel across the Lebanese border. U.S. officials also warned their residents in Lebanon to leave as quickly as possible. This serious warning from the U.S. is interpreted as an indication that the conflict may shift and spread to Lebanon as well. Officials in the United States are extremely cautious about this. This is due to the fact that Hezbollah, a terrorist organization with Iranian support, has been using Lebanon's borders as an attack zone for its militant troops, and Hamas has continued its indiscriminate attacks against Israel. Both of yeah. these factors have contributed to this situation. As a consequence of this, the government in Washington, D.C., is concerned about the safety of its citizens in light of the risks posed by the conflict, which may spread into Lebanon. In addition to their citizens in the United States, Israeli officials frequently communicate with their constituents in Lebanon and Syria. Today, Israeli authorities issued an urgent warning to its people living in both countries, instructing them to seek refuge and shelter as soon as possible. This discovery lends credence to the idea that Israel is planning to initiate fresh military operations against Syria and Lebanon in the not-too-distant future. Mm. We have now moved on to the most violent combat of the war, which is taking place as key events continue to take place on the front lines to Israel's north. The Gaza Strip is being continuously bombed by the Israeli Air Force. Yesterday marked the beginning of a new wave of Israeli airstrikes against the Gaza Strip, which targeted a large number of Hamas facilities. The Israel Defense Forces IDF, have stated that they are working toward completely destroying this terrorist organization, and authorities have cautioned civilians to prepare for a protracted conflict. Even after receiving this vital warning, tensions in the southern kibbutz of Nahal Oz, which is located close to the Gaza Strip, did not begin to ease. There were rumors that drones had penetrated the territory. During the clashes that took place in the south, the terrorist organization Hamas asserted that they had fired four drones at Israel. As a result of all of these occurrences, the president of Israel, Isaac Herzog, has announced that his country is ready to launch a comprehensive military operation against Hamas in the Gaza Strip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In spite of the difficulty of defending itself from terrorist attacks, Tel Aviv continues to get support from other countries throughout the world. While we were reporting on the bombings in Syria, the Secretary of State of the United States, Anthony Blinken, arrived in Tel Aviv to show the Israeli people that the United States stands in solidarity with them. Blinken held meetings with a number of high-ranking leaders, including Prime Minister Netanyahu, President Isaac Herzog, and others. A few news organizations have reported that Vladimir Zelensky, the President of Ukraine, is also thinking about visiting Israel. At the same time, Turkey has started negotiations to secure the release of hostages. I'm not trying to be offensive or anything, but doesn't the president of Ukraine have better things to be doing than, you know, visiting Israel to show his support? Right now, he needs to show his own country support um, and, you know, make sure that they resolve the conflict they have going on right now with Russia. I'm a little bit confused about that one. Ukraine president needs to stay in Ukraine. Let's say At that. At the same time, Turkey has started negotiations to secure the release of hostages taken by extremists. Under the condition of anonymity, a senior Turkish official revealed that President Erdogan of Turkey had ordered a procedure against civilians held by Hamas. 
The mm. official stated that the required authorities are performing the procedure against the civilians. In a nutshell, nations all over the world are moving forward with significant initiatives to put an end to terrorist assaults against Israel and to rebuild peace in the Middle East. Yo, there we have it, guys. A couple extra parties sound like joining in on the Israeli war. Um, we got Syria just randomly shooting over rockets, um, starting more conflict, kind of like poking the bear while the bear is already occupied. Um, so now, you know, Israel is responding to Syria, and it sounds like Things are going to, you know, spread over into Lebanon now. So um, the U.S. Embassy has evacuated there uh, because things could boil over there in Lebanon. I'm excited to see what's going to, you know, unfold and, you know, the weeks to come. So we're definitely going to keep following this. Um, I'll break information as I get it. You guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section down below. Also, make sure you guys hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button, guys. We're on the road to the truth. Hop aboard for the journey. I'll catch you guys on the next one.